Hi guys and welcome. Um, going veering off sort of most recent videos, uh, but harking back to some older ones, as it were, I've just upgraded my camp cook set because I'm determined to get out and about and enjoy the beautiful scenery around here a little bit more this year because the past couple of years have just been so busy, I've just not had the chance to do so. And I'm a little bit annoyed at myself for that. I picked this up yesterday and ideally I did want the 100 gram, the smaller version, because that will nest inside the pot. Unfortunately, this was the only size that they did have. And this is a 240 gram one and it cost £8.50. I know, right? I'm just going to quickly show you the box. I'm, I'm not uh, going to do the whole unboxing thing because it's literally a box with this inside it. I'm all for minimal recyclable packaging where possible. And this comes in a very simple cardboard box, just big enough, with a single sheet fold out instructions in multiple languages. So big thumbs up to Fire Maple on that one. No fancy plastic shielding, frippery, no, no nonsense, no, um, no gaudy OTT packaging. So I've got the scales here and this weighs in at 613 grams without the um, the gas canister. Add the gas canister. Now this one is 240 grams of gas and the canister itself weighs 362 grams. So adding the gas canister obviously is going to add another couple of hundred grams onto um, onto the whole pack. So you're talking 700-ish grams. But to put that into some kind of perspective, for those who struggle with the whole how many grams and what does it really weigh thing, 600 odd grams is about the same weight as a mug of delicious uh, single origin fresh roasted Arabica coffee. As you can see there, that's 618 grams. And this is 613 grams. So there you go, lighter than a cup of delicious single origin fresh roasted Arabica coffee. Oh, that's good. 361 grams and then we, uh, then after the boil test, I will calculate how much fuel it's used to boil 500 milliliters of water. Why 500 milliliters? Specifically because the stove uh, claims to boil 500 milliliters, half a liter of water, in one minute and 42 seconds. And so I want to test that. It comes with its own little stuff sack mesh bag thing, which is a little bit of a tight fit. I've heard people on reviews grumble about uh, things like this being a tight fit. It's not really much of a faff. It's, it's nothing to complain about. And when you're out hiking and trekking, generally speaking, you're not in a massive hurry. It's about relaxing, relaxing and enjoying uh, the nature scenery and what have you. So anyway, um, we've got a hard anodized aluminium or aluminum for our colonial cousins pot with a heat exchanger ring. The heat heats up here, this heats up and you get a more even heat uh, dispersion across the whole pot and minimal heat loss from the sides of the pot. We've got a neoprene cover which wraps all the way around with a warning thing on with various don't, don't and do do things. We've got a little simple spring lock catch uh, which is locked in place and removed by simply putting a bit of downward pressure on the handle and flipping it out or flipping it in accordingly and that keeps that handle locked. With that removed, you can slide that down so it's out of the way. And this handle is actually spring loaded, as you can see there. And without, you know, you'd have to really give it some excessive shaking to make everything fall out of there. Now granted with a fuel canister in there, there's gonna be a bit more weight. So it's not recommended, but it's not just going to fall open is what I'm saying. The handle flips out, as you can see, it's spring loaded. Once you reach a certain point, it will just there it goes, spring out and snap like that and it clips into a little lock at the back here. Whoops, I dropped the lid. And as you can see, that's nice and sturdy. So we've got a plastic lid with a silicone handle and a, a vent hole or pouring spout, I guess, drain hole perhaps. Inside here at the top, we've got the 
stove adapter burner ring so I can now get rid of that tissue paper and again you notice tissue paper recyclable these little tabs flip in like so this sits on top of the stove and it allows uh, it allows you to use ordinary pots which is a nice little touch you can of course get those for this for its more expensive uh, version that you all know um, it is however an optional extra that you have to buy which adds to the expense that's already there this cardboard box acts as a spacer to emulate the smaller pot which sits in there so that can go aside for the recycling and then I'm going to wiggle out the actual stove itself so there's the stove I, I love the really in-your-face neon green colours and there's the valve with a tab on with warnings and uh, use outdoors only etc. I am of course indoors but I am in my conservatory with the windows open uh, so I'm in a well ventilated area and in the interests of a proper test I will additionally be doing an outdoor test as well as this indoor boil test because obviously this is something that's designed to be used outdoors. It's, uh, it's daft relying on figures for boiling indoors. So we'll pop that down there a moment. Underneath that is this little tripod with flip out legs which lock into place. And this accepts two different sizes of fuel canister and gives you a nice wide legged stable base for that to sit on. So and then the pot of course is simply just a pot and inside of that whoops inside of that um i don't know how easily that comes across on here but there are markings for point uh point four point six and point eight of a liter point eight being the maximum you could technically probably squeeze a liter in there but you'd be pushing it at that and there's a risk of it spilling over and what have you so um as you can see that handles nice and solid as well once locked into place so I'm just going to cut at the moment here while I take this tab off and get everything uh, and then we'll go ahead set up the stove and we'll boil the water and do a timer check. With that tab removed all I did is just pulled out one side of that allowing me to slip it off and then slot it back in there. Um, the next thing to do is making sure that this is opened out because this is your valve control make sure that's fully tightened clockwise righty tighty lefty loosey you'll notice there is a piezo ignition which you probably can't see the spark of but that fires a spark between this igniter tip and the stove and then the next thing we need to do is actually fit it onto the stove i'm just going to unclip it from this tripod for the moment until we get this on so spin this on quickly tighten it down that was actually leaking a very slight amount of gas. I hadn't turned the uh, hadn't turned it off as thoroughly as I thought there. I think I must have caught that. However, quick nip and that's okay. That's now turned off. Yeah, that's turned off. I just had a paranoid moment of his am I feeling gas there, but no, that's turned off. And to light it, you open the gas and press the igniter button. So I'm just going to turn that off for the moment. Uh, the pot stand sits on here. Once you turn these around, this has got slots which fit onto the rim and then they can be rotated anti-clockwise and lock into these little locking pegs. So it's not super, super sturdy, but it will stop it sort of getting knocked off easily. And you can put pretty much any size of pot that you liked on there. That's just a stainless storage jar that happens to be sitting here, just to give you an example. Um, I imagine you can probably fit it like so as well and sit a wider pot and have it closer to the flame. By the look of that so you still got a little bit of airflow i'm not sure how stable that would be however so but that's you know that's a thought and the pot itself of course has got these slots four slots around it and it's got these two lugs what you need to do is locate two of those and press it in and turn it around and then you'll see that that 
locks that very, very firmly in place. So a little bit of an accidental bump like so is not going to knock that off. So here I've got 500 millilitres of water. Put that straight into the pot and I'm going to lift this up so we can actually watch that coming to a boil. From a higher viewpoint you can see we've got the stove and everything set up. We've got the, uh, the canister on there. I'm going to pop the lid on which just sits in place and it's got this little vent pouring hole. I guess you could, if you really wanted, snap that on there to help keep that in place while it boiled, uh, but there's a risk of, um, of catching yourself with the steam if you do. You can twist this around, incidentally, so that you can change this, the position of this uh, quite easily. Uh, so for example, you could have that like that and be able to hold it in place while you drained water. I guess it doesn't really matter unduly, but you can do that. So I'm going to leave this like this for the uh, for the moment, and I'm going to get my stopwatch timer up on my phone, and we'll use that to time how quickly it boils this water, and see if it does actually boil half a litre in one minute and 42 seconds. So... I could do with somebody uh, somebody else to hit the start button while I do the turning and igniting. But what I'll do is I'll hit the start button immediately after uh, I've ignited the stove. So here goes. One minute forty two. Technically, that could be called a boil, but I'm going to go for a rolling boil. One minute fifty five. And two minutes, 20 seconds, we're on a, a good rolling boil. So I'm going to turn that off now. Two minutes and 20 seconds, which personally I think is pretty good. Um, was it exactly one minute, 42 seconds? No, that was probably measured in the most ideal conditions using a specific brand of fuel canister or something like that. When twisting the pot off, you need to make sure that you hold the um, the plastic base of the stove rather than uh, the gas can. Um, these are all little things obviously I'm going to be picking up and learning as a go but I want to make sure that uh, that does not come unscrewed and, and leak gas clearly. And that's a little bit stiffer, it's clearly expanded ever so slightly because of the heating process. But I'm very impressed with that so far, of course that's in best case scenario examples. What I'm going to do next is show you the nesting of everything and cover a couple of things. Because I have actually watched a few reviews about the jet boil and various other stoves. And um, it's what led me to choose this one. One of the things that I see repeatedly in all of these reviews is people showing the nesting at the end of it by disassembling everything and just sort of hurling it all into the pot. Now this pot here is hard anodized aluminium or aluminium as I've said for our colonial cousins. And what that means is while it's anodized it has a hard coating which protect the soft aluminium from um, suffering from ox oxide and getting into whatever you're boiling or cooking inside of the pot. I see people using steel and titanium sporks to stir things and dig about in these pots. And I see people hurling all these bits just straight into the pot as is. You really don't want to be scratching that. And as a result of that, I was looking at options of ways to wrap this to protect the insides of the pot 
also additional protection for the stove and everything itself perhaps but mainly to protect the insides of the pot most likely I'm going to end up going with something like this which is your standard cheap as chips J cloth this is a um, an Asda branded one I think it is and uh, and it costs something like 70 pence for a packet of 10 or something ridiculous like that they're incredibly cheap and uh, and they're thick enough to give a little bit of protection i am going to try as the brand microfiber cloth uh, but i suspect that these will be a little bit too thick because i did notice that that stove is a very very tight fit inside there but i just wanted to mention that um, this is something i've seen a lot and i really don't like to see because you start scratching the insides of that pot and you're exposing the aluminium underneath the anodizing, which is not particularly a good idea, I don't think. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to empty this out and take the opportunity to actually give this a wash so it's ready for its first actual proper use. Um, I just need to get some boiling water to wash it in. Well, where am I going to get that, I wonder? I know. Things have cooled down, ready for packing away. But before I do that, I just wanted to show you this, which I noticed when I went to clean the pot, I decided um, that I'll give it a, a good clean. Because like all cookware, when you receive some new cookware, you should really give it a good wash. And obviously it goes without saying, don't use the scouring side of a scouring pad, because again, you don't want to scratch the actual hard anodizing surface. Um, and wanting to give it a good clean, I wanted to see if I could take this neoprene sleeve off, which I can as you can see and interestingly if for some reason this really nice bright sort of woodland scene is not hardcore or thrash metal enough for you you can flip this around and you can have this uh, full-on hardcore thrash metal black version instead and um, i will be reverting to the green woodland one because of course we want our pots to be able to mask themselves from their natural prey in the wild a little bit fiddly to get it back on, but it does go on without much of a struggle. There's a lot of uh, a lot of stretch and flex in that. You don't need to cut anything. It all slips off over the handle. We are now going to look at packing the stuff away. And as mentioned, I'm going to look at using this because I suspect I'm going to need something this thin. Um, yeah, I doubt very much that's a really tight squeeze. I, I really don't think I'm going to get away with using one of the microfiber cloths. Um, but of course, the added bonus is you've also got a J cloth for wiping bits and pieces up. Um, so I see no negative in that. But essentially, what you would do is you would have your, your pot stand, your stove, which would sit on top of it, which would go in like so, your gas canister, which obviously this one's too large, it will not go on. And then your pot ring, which will sit, hopefully, on the top like that. And then I may need to do a little bit of snipping to get that nice and neat, but I think that's going to work well. And I'll be happy knowing that that's not going to scratch the pants off the inside of that cooking pot. Um, and I'll, I'll feel much happier about that. It's going to, uh, minimize the chance of any rattling as well, which has got to be a good thing. And another thing that's literally just this minute occurred to me is also doing this, it should give you the ability to simply wiggle the whole lot straight out of your cooking pot in one go without having to sort of faff around tipping and shaking and jiggling and everything. Um, and then everything's there to go. I had forgotten to reweigh the canister, so that's teared out to zero. The canister weight is now 355 grams. We started with 361 grams. That means we have used six grams of fuel, six grams of gas to boil half a liter of water, uh, to take it to a rolling boil and just, just past, you know, and maintaining a rolling boil. Um, and that will make almost two cups uh, for one person. It's, it's ideal. So, that should actually be quite economical. Of course, it's going to be a little bit more out in the wild, slightly longer cooking time, slightly more gas used, I suspect, but we'll see how that goes when we do the outdoor portion coming right up.
On to the next part of the video, and for this one I didn't want to stray too far from home and I'm up at a local viewpoint and as you can see that's the sky bridge down there you can see the cars heading along the road connecting to the hopscotching part of the sky bridge heading, heading over towards Kalakin and and uh, there's the uh, the Cullen mountain range over in the distance there beautiful view from here and it's got a little bit of elevation which means we're going to get a little bit of wind it is an unusually calm day for here um, however it'll do it'll do for the purposes of this test and ordinarily i would try and shield the stove anyway so uh, this should give us a fairly good idea of what the stove will do i'm going to do the first start of the test by boiling half a liter of water out here in the open and as I did in the indoor test and we'll see how that performs. I'm going to use that to make a coffee and then after that I'm just going to cook up some ramen noodles. So there's the stuff sack. As mentioned previously, a little bit snug kind of like putting on your favorite pair of jeans after a good Christmas dinner but not impossible and I'm going to start by uh, grinding up some uh, fresh coffee beans for a nice cup of coffee and because we've gone all modern with the stove I'm going to go old school as possible for everything else and we're going to grind up some coffee beans the way the ancients would have done so so we'll be back in a minute. Right, so let's get the stove set up. Almost forgot to flip that out. Oh, make sure that's fully closed. Five hundred milliliters of water. Let's get that locked in place. And we'll get the timer ready. And there we are, 235 to a rolling boil, which I think is pretty impressive compared to, um, let me just turn that off now, compare that to the 2 minutes 20 for the indoor test yesterday, I think that was pretty good going. So I'll pop that aside. 
and I notice this is a little bit stiff once it's heated up. There's obviously some metal expansion. Um, it's not a bad thing in the sense that it's secure, it's better than it getting loose, but worth bearing in mind. Okay, that's still quite hot. I'm not going to sit this down on this bench because this bench, despite looking like wood, is actually plastic. And you can see that because there are melted areas behind the camera where people have had outdoor barbecues before, obviously. And it's some kind of plastic or glass fibre type material made to look like wood. Uh, obviously, the long longevity. Wood doesn't last well up here. Uh, in, exposed in the highlands as people uh, who live up here are aware. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed with that. Two minutes 35 uh, outdoors in a bit of a breeze. Yeah, that's good. I'll take that. Just touching on this, uh, those of you who are subscribers will know this is my Bean Q uh, automatic coffee grinder, coffee maker, um, which I love. I use this daily. This is my take to work to have decent coffee uh, mug. The, uh, the only thing, uh, well, the, the cup the pouring cup, um, kettle, whatever you want to call it at the bottom, sadly cracked. It's, it wasn't a very good material. It needed to be made out of something a bit more like the material of the lid here. Uh, the only thing I'm not overly keen on with it is the cup is a little bit small. So I will be using one of my favourite travel mugs, um, which I don't use that much because the lid sadly doesn't screw on very securely. But this is a favourite of mine because my son bought me this years ago. And as you can see, it is a Canon camera lens and um, being into photography and having been so on and off for years uh, I love this, it's great uh, I like that the little vent hole makes a nice little pourer uh, for the coffee especially for drip coffee rather than just dumping the whole lot out and of course helps keep the warmth in as well another thumbs up there I'm just testing the simmering abilities. That boiled up very quickly. That was only about 250 ml of water. I'm just kind of testing the simmering abilities and it still looks to be boiling quite ferociously. I just don't know how low I can turn this down. Although I've got that pretty low just now, and that's not bad. Hmm. Okay, that's better than it was. I was just a bit wary of turning it lower than I had it before. It's still lit, but it does sound like the wind's really trying to blow that out. So maybe, maybe it could be used for simmering with a suitable windscreen. Uh, that's actually simmering quite nicely at that. It just uh, feels a little bit, the sounds a little bit like it's struggling to stay lit, but maybe that's just how it sounds. A complete aside, uh, because of the enclosed nature of the flame on this, you can actually put your hands around here 
and get and get a nice heat off that and warm your hands up while shielding it. Not very practical if you're simmering something for an hour, of course, but you know. Now, I really don't have an appropriate spoon for this because, like a fool, I forgot to put a decent plastic spoon in. Um, and as previously mentioned regarding storing things internally, I do have a metal um, knife, fork and spoon set, but it's not something I would be using in here because of the risk of scratching the hard anodized coating. Uh, ordinarily, I would decant this into a bowl for eating anyway. I just don't have one with me at the moment because I've only got my small day trekking kit pack with me which is very very minimal very small rucksack so uh, well, there we go uh, I also intended to bring some uh, some sort of chicken bits I had with me to to spice this up a little bit with but completely forgot in my excitement to get out in the sunshine um, yeah there we go nice hmm This weather is absolutely beautiful today. It's so nice. And just to be able to sit in the outdoors in nice clear weather, enjoying the view of the sunshine, listening to the birds that are not seagulls. Incidentally, if anyone knows any good software to edit out seagulls, please let me know. Eating a budget packet of Asda ramen noodles from my new stove. What could be better? Cheers, everybody. Having had my budget feast, I'm just now boiling, as you can see, a little bit of water, just a small amount in the bottom which I can then use to swill around and clean out the pot. So that's why it's out now, so nice and clean, as you can see. Uh, just a quick wipe out, good enough. So I'm just gonna boil up the remainder of this last little bit of water to top up my coffee um, and enjoy the scenery for a little bit longer before I head back to, um, to sort of do the wrap up bit of the video. So with that all done, as a final summary, I can say I'm personally very pleased with this. It does exactly what I wanted it to do, what I expected. Um, I have, with regards to current configuration, um, wrapped the pot stand separately, as you can see, in a microfiber towel, which also gives me a microfiber towel, and then the stove and the uh, tripod for the, uh, for the canister is in a, uh, a J cloth as discussed previously. When I can get an appropriately sized gas canister, I will have one of those in there and then I will have to maybe reassess whether the um, pot converter pot stand fits um, appropriately, but we'll, uh, we'll see when that occurs. This is now the third day of use and uh, I've been out and used this again today. Looking at the gas canister, and let's look at the weights. For the outdoor test, I actually boiled this four times. And it was once with half a litre of water as an outdoor test um, to see how quickly it boiled. And as you saw, it was about 10 or 15 seconds slower than the indoor one, which was impressive, I thought. I then boiled it and simmered it to make some ramen noodles. I boiled a small amount a third time uh, just to wipe out and clean out the pot. And then I boiled it a fourth time, which was not intentional at all to top up my coffee. Uh, the reason I did that was I actually broke my water bottle while I was squeezing in the uh, small amount of water to wash the pot out. 
So it was a case of do something with that water or just dump it because obviously the water bottle was actually actually cracked, which I was a little bit annoyed with myself about, but hey, these things happen. Um, what I should have done is just uncapped it and poured it rather than squeezing it out as I did. But the total amount of grams used was 23 grams on the, on that outdoor test, which I don't think is bad. 23 grams of fuel for four separate boilings within the pot. And then today's uh, use has been to boil about 300 milliliters of water for a coffee. And that little clip that you saw earlier, um, where I was sat, it what looked like on, on top of a hill in the middle of nowhere, uh, that's close to a village nearby me, and it's up a little trail on there. And I was, uh, I was at that little point there, I was grinding the coffee for my coffee, and that used uh, four grams of fuel to boil 300 milliliters of water, which I think is really, really good. I'm really impressed with it, and um, I am. And the one thing I haven't mentioned, I believe, is the price. These range from about 52 to 60 ish pounds, depending on where you buy them from. This particular one was from Amazon, and I just happened to see it on Amazon, so I didn't really do any shopping around. And it was only after when I did a little bit of uh, Googling around for, um, for information. I did see a couple of stores that had it for around 53 pound or so. So, um, so if you're after one, do, do a little bit of shopping around. And for 50, 50 odd pound, it absolutely beats the jet boil hands down even if it's ever so slightly slower it's very well made um, and even if it is ever so slightly slower you're talking 120 130 quid for a jet boil something like that huge difference you're talking half the price or less so would i recommend it based on usage so far i absolutely would might that change with use maybe so uh, if anything um, horrendously bad happens with it, it falls apart or just stops working, I will do an update. And um, I will, in the meantime, just cross my fingers that it behaves and carries on performing as well as it is doing right now. So um, I know this was quite a long video, so thanks for your patience if you sat through and watched the whole video. And if you did found, find this interesting, have a look back at some of my older videos with the alcohol stoves and what have you. You may find something interesting there. Obviously a little bit old, a little bit out of date now, and I don't have anything new and current regarding camping or, or bushcrafting or that kind of thing. Um, but please do take a look at my other videos and uh, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe and leave a comment, ask anything you like. I always try to answer my comments. So thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.